It's amazing when I can be speechless. <laughs> Amen. He's good. Well, aren't you glad we've got some young'uns in this church? I am. I want to release them now to go. You guys can go to uh, your lesson. And uh, appreciate everybody that's working with them. But it does me good to look around and see what we do have. And you guys did a great job on the offering this morning, too. I love, I'm telling you, you train them in the way they should go. And it matters, really matters. I'm very grateful. If you would, open your Bibles to the book of Acts, to chapter 2. We're going to pray before I begin. i got some things I want to share with you this evening, this morning. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here. I, I deeply appreciate this church. And Sunday is my very favorite day. I, I just love Sundays. Love to see you. Love to be here. Love to come into God's presence. Y'all just do such a good job with the choir. Thank you so much. Um, it's, it just touches me um, to worship, and, and we certainly need to. So let's ask the Lord as we continue to worship him. Father, we love you, and, and thank you so much. Lord, it, it really is. Words fail me. Thank you. For what you've done for us. Thank you that uh, you knew that death couldn't hold you. You knew that you could take all of our sin. And die. And yet because you are the author of life. And you've never sinned. Death had no right to keep you. So you died in my place. You died in our place. And I thank you. I pray that today you will let us hear your word, speak to our hearts. We, we ask, speak, Lord, speak to us. And we thank you that we are listening. Help us to go forward and be changed, even if it's, it's, even if it's a small change. Help us to just go forward, sharing what you've done for us with all who will listen. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I've reminded you, I'm finally beginning to wind down the series we've been in about repentance and uh, restoration and, and reconciliation. And I'm reminded that, that the scripture's clear. If you study the words, you can see that most of it is easily understood. Now, there will always be mysteries. I, you hear me say it all the time. Plenty of questions you can ask me. Um, that I can will say I, I don't know. But there's some things that I do know, and, and among the things that I do know absolutely is that the gospel message is real, that his message is powerful, and that message is clearly explained and demonstrated, and that's part of what I want us to look at today. Uh, Paul said in, in, in 1 Corinthians, you need not turn there, I'll just quote it for you. He said, for what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance. If you want to know first things first, if you want to know what really is of first importance, here it is, that Christ died for our sins according to Scripture, that he was buried, he was raised on the third day, and he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. And after he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve, he told them to go and preach the gospel. Preach to witness, just, just, just to witness. It's not, you don't have to have a theo theological degree. None of those men were theologians. The only one of the whole bunch that we are very well familiar with that studied uh, uh, in, in a school per se. Now, these disciples knew the word. Now, there's no question about it. They were very literate in, in Scripture. They understood, they, they studied the Bible, all of them. But about the only one, Paul sat under the feet of Gamaliel and, and uh, th they were surprised that Peter and James and John and some of these, they called them ignorant and unlearned men. 
Now, I don't, nobody wants to be called ignorant, but there's a whole lot I don't know, so I can plead ignorance on several fronts. But uh, what we need to do is understand it's not a, the special anointing that you need is the Holy Spirit of God. And if you're born again, he lives on the inside of you. So he's all you need. His grace is enough. And you say, well, preacher, I, I, I hate to talk to people because I might mess up. Well, join the club. We just got you. If messing up is going to keep you from doing anything, you're never going to do another thing in your life. And that's just the truth. If I, because I've run off the road a time or two, wound up in a ditch or two, quit driving, I ain't going to quit driving. Now, I am trying to be a little more careful, and I got my wife praying for me, but uh, <laughs> especially when I'm driving. Um, but. I, I, we just need to do what he's called us to do, and he's equipped us to do it, and we need to understand that and get busy about his business. That's what this sermon series is entirely about. So come with me, and here's what I want you to look for. I'm going to give you several examples of some of the sermons where folks got saved in, in the book of Acts. And I want you to see if you can find the gospel. The gospel is that Christ died for our sins, that he was buried, that he is resurrected and alive, and he will appear to as many as will receive him, plain and simple. So look, on the day of Pentecost, now I'm not going to read all of it, but in Acts chapter 2, Peter stood up, he was amazed after they were filled with the Spirit, he quoted scripture after scripture, it's a wonderful sermon that you need to study. But I want to hone in on verse 22 toward the end of the chapter. So if you go with me to Acts 2, uh, 22. He, Peter's talking. He said, men of Israel. Now he's got a crowd. I want you to understand 3,000 of this crowd got saved. He's got a crowd. Okay? I mean, that's, that's more than the population of Chatham. Okay? Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. Newsflash, they all knew. They all knew about the miracles of Jesus. They, under, they had seen, most of them had seen his miracles. Most of them had seen his crucifixion. Most of them were aware of, of what was going on. So he's not talking to a group that's ignorant of the, what's been going on. Verse 23, this man was handed over to you by God's set purpose. He was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world, which is amazing to me. That he knew that the whole time. Okay. He was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, Put him to death by nailing him to the cross. So here's this, his death. But God raised him from the dead. Plain and simple. Freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, he's quoting Old Testament, I saw the Lord always before me because he's at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will live in hope. Folks, we ought to be a people full of the hope of God. We ought to be full of the hope of God. Because I know what my future holds. I don't know everything it holds. But I promise you it's going to turn out very well because of, what he, because of his gift of eternal life said, but God raised him from the dead. It was impossible for it to hold him. He, quote, he quotes David. And then in verse 27, he says, because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. To me, you've made, you have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Brothers, I can tell you confidently, that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. 
And he's speaking to those in, in Jerusalem. But he was a prophet, and he knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God's raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of the fact. Can you not truthfully tell me that you are a witness to the fact of his resurrection? I can tell you I'm a witness to the fact of his resurrection. He came into my life. He changed me. Made a marked difference. And, and that is, it should be every one of our testimony. Now, your testimony is not my testimony because most of y'all weren't as mean as I was. Most of y'all didn't do some of the junk I got involved in, and I'm glad you didn't. But I want to tell you that testi gory testimonies are no more. Listen, Paul walked with the Lord as much as he knew how, tried as hard as he could. But what we got to understand is that you have a testimony that you can give. And Peter just simply says, we're all witnesses of the fact. Exalted to the right hand of God, he's received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven. And yet he said, the Lord <coughs> said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and, and to the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And here's Peter's answer. Here's the answer we need to give. Repent. Do a 180. Change your lifestyle. Is it working out for you the way you want it to work out for you? How are you doing? Okay. It's what we can talk to people about. Repent and be baptized, every one of you. See, he, he, he wants everybody saved. He wants everybody. Yeah, we make a mistake when we give up on people. Now, you can't save any of them but you can share with anyone who will listen. And he said, <coughs> Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 3,000 got saved that day. 3,000 men got saved that day. They didn't even list any of the rest of the family. So it's an amazing story. And I understand it's an outpouring. And you say, well, wait a minute, Willard. You know, things are different here. We're not in Jerusalem. This is 2023. I understand that. But he's still saving last time I checked. And so what we want to do is simply present the gospel. Do you see in that brief sermon, just a few minutes, I, and I interjected more than Peter did, in, in this time, I probably that was probably about five to seven minutes. And he preached the gospel. And he shared what he was a witness to. So does that, I mean, I mean that's an example. You can use this scripture if you want to. You can open your Bible and say, let me show you. And you can share it. Well, go with me, if you will, to Acts chapter 10. Acts 10. <clears throat> Picking it up in verse 34. Acts 10, 34. Again, listen for the gospel. So what's happened, <clears throat> Peter got this message, and, and so they, 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 they sent some Gentiles came to Peter and said, we need to hear from you. Well, Jews couldn't associate with the Gentiles, but Peter had his vision and, and the Lord clearly spoke to him and said, there's some men downstairs fixing to ask for you. Go with them. So he went against Jewish custom, and, and uh, they would have said against their law, and met with the Gentiles. So they, they come in, and, and he goes into Cornelius' house, and, 
And so they've got a whole Cornelius' families there. There's a big crowd there. They're all waiting to hear because God, an angel told Cornelius to send for Peter. Now you say, well, wonder why the angel didn't tell Cornelius how to be saved. Because the angels don't have the redemptive right that humans do because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. He didn't come as an angel. He came as a man. And he redeemed humanity. So a man needed to tell the story. So they sent for Peter. Peter's, I'm sure, very nervous because he's going in with a bunch of heathen. He's going in with a bunch of Gentiles. Now, Cornelius had, had, was, a, was a proselyte, so he could, he could legally probably associate with Cornelius some, but he, the last thing in the world they wanted to do is hang out with these heathen. Okay? But he goes in. And so they said to Peter, all right, here's what happened. You know, what's your message? Well, in verse 34, Peter began to speak. I now realize it's true that God does not show favoritism. This is a radical departure for one of God's chosen people to make that statement. Okay? But accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what's right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel. Telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. We're witnesses. Notice the word. We're witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by, what does it say? What does it say? Whom God had already chosen by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he's the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I would love to see the day that the Holy Ghost interrupted one of my sermons and just fell on all of us. Peter, he, the Holy Ghost said, that's enough, Peter. You've said enough. Now, he said enough for them to get saved, for them to be filled with the Spirit just like they were. The Gentiles were filled with the Spirit just like the Jews were in Cornelius' house. He made it available to all of us. Boy, I, a Scottish boy, is mighty tickled about that. Okay? And so what? <laughs> he stopped. The Lord interrupted him. The Holy Ghost just fell. That's enough, Peter. Boom. And look at the simplicity of that message. When he finished telling them about the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus and that forgiveness of sins was available to them, that was, all, that, that was his sermon. He got interrupted. He didn't get to make his three points. He didn't get to shake hands as they walked out the back door. He didn't get to do any of the stuff that we just do. <laughs> the Holy Ghost fell. And they had to decide, well, how are we going to baptize them? And they said, well, I reckon we're going to baptize them. If he's already baptized them, I reckon we can baptize them now. And so look at how simple this message is. Now, you can use either one of these to, to preach the gospel out of. If you've got somebody to listen to, you say, if you got, keep your Bible with you. Mark the passages. And there's sermon after sermon after sermon. I'm not going to read a, uh, maybe next week. I'll decide. But there's more. Acts 13, you don't turn there. I've got it, but we, we don't have time. You, you go, uh, you can see sermon after sermon after sermon. And it's the gospel. And it's a witness of you telling what he's done for you. Now, if he's done nothing for you, 
then you need to come down here and give your heart to Jesus right now. Let's interrupt this song. But if he's done something for you, just simply look for opportunities. You don't have to force it on anybody. You, you, all you got to do is just do what he told you to do. Be a witness to what he's done. And love people. If you, you know, if you treat people good, sometimes they'll listen to you for a little while anyhow. They might give you five minutes. That's all it takes. It's amazing. Time these sermons. I, I should have got Terry to do this. I should have just read it, normal talking, and let you time how long these sermons are. Now, y'all say, well, great day. If Willard, if you could do that, <laughs> then anybody can do that. Because y'all know how much I like to talk and cross-reference and explain and go back. Now, Peter did pull in a lot of scripture in part of his sermon. And it's amazing to me to look at this. But my whole point today, my whole point next week, and probably for the rest of my life, it won't be the only point, but it will be of first importance, which is what Paul said, is it not? He said, let me tell you, of first importance. Every person in this room that is saved is called to win people to Jesus. Every person in this room that has a young is, is commissioned to bring them into a relationship with Christ. Every person in this room that has a loved one of any ilk can share what he's done for you. Now you say, well, wait a minute, I've tried and they ain't listening. Well, keep praying. Ask the Lord to send labors across their path. I finally quit talking to my oldest brother about it because he'd heard it so much and didn't. Uh, I'd said all I could say and he didn't want to hear from me. He helped raise me. I couldn't tell him much. But the Lord sent a deputy sheriff to him to serve a warrant on him and he got under conviction and got saved and had his life radically changed. Just pray. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest to send labor into the harvest field. Sometimes you don't harp on somebody, don't ride them, don't keep on. You just whisper prayers. Is he good? Yes. Does he love you? Yes. Do you know that? Yes. Then share it. Plain and simple. So, again, the challenge from last week that uh, Ryan Edwards uh, uh, gave us through the video is to pick at least one that you're going to pray for every day, that you're going to fast for if, if you feel led to, and if you can, some cannot, but that you will come and that he will, you will be able to know him that you can bring the message of Christ to somebody. So pray. Now, here's what I would love to happen. I'd love for you to lead more than one people to the Lord. And it wouldn't hurt my feelings one bit if somebody gets to my one before I do. <laughs> Be fine with me. Be fine. Then I'll just pick another one. So as the Lord begins to work in your heart, and as we get bold enough to simply do what he tells us to do, I want to hear the testimony. I, I want you to call me. I want you to text me. If you're willing to stand up here and, and share, love to hear some of the testimonies. Because I want to see everyone that we can get into heaven, into heaven. Amen? All right. As we get ready for our invitational hymn, who's your one? Let's pray for them. If you have a need here today, if there's anything that you need to bring before the Lord, there's power in our corporate prayer. That's why the altar is important. It's not so much that you've got to do it up here. God cares you wherever you are. But there's something powerful about us praying for each other so if you've got a need today there's a physical need if there's a financial need if there's an emotional need if you've got 
you want to come and pray for your one. You want me to pray with you, I'll be glad to. There's nothing special about me, but I'll be glad to pray with you. If you want to just come to the altar. But my challenge is, let's go get them. Amen. Standing. 485, the altar's open. You've got a need. Please bring it before the Lord.